let's look at the so-called G40. It is presented as a political faction. And we did not uh, 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 visit uh, archives or, or, or reference uh, uh, sources uh, to, to find out what a political faction is. We know what a political faction is. But despite the fact that we know generally, or if we don't know, we should know what it is, um, uh, you get people writing endlessly that there's a faction about G40. And when you, uh, uh, you ask what this G40 is, or even when you read what you people write or report about G40, you say G40 most of the time is uh, Sylvia Kasukwele and Jonathan Moy. <laughs> most of the time, that's what you say. And occasionally, or some other time, you say G40 is uh, Sylvia Kasukwele, Jonathan Moyo, and Patrick Joao. Occasionally, you say that. But if you were to look like uh, uh, the stuff coming out, uh, let's say the last uh, four weeks, it's, it's uh, Sylvia Kasukwele and Jonathan Moyo. Now, if that's what it is, because that's what you write, you say, oh, G40 in trouble. No, 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 no it's, it's, it's these two guys. So this is G40. No? Now, the last time I checked, two is a duo. Uh, the duo, du, D-U-O, two-O. D-U-O, two. <coughs> and three is a trio. It's not a faction. A, a, a faction is serious, it's a group, many people. You can't have a political faction with two. I mean, the sports guys, you know, there was a, these sports guys, they are very, they say the duo of so and so and so and so, of strikers. You can have two strikers there, they are a duo. <laughs> uh, I, I, I think the time has come in our country for people to uh, demonstrate that uh, uh, we are highly regarded as an educated country for a reason. But when it comes to this particular issue, a point where we betray our educational background as a country, <laughs> uh, it doesn't, you know, sustain uh, the, the, that that fact. Because honestly, you can't have a faction that has Jonathan Moyo and Xavier Casquero. <laughs> there's, there's, there's something nonsensical about that, you know. I mean, if anyone has uh, issues with these two guys, just, just raise the issues, we don't mind. We'll, we'll deal with it. just two people. But don't call us a faction, you know? And then when we're joined by, 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 by Comrade Joao, we just become three. And we are students at the faculty of law there. Yeah. And said the faction is starting. Can you imagine? <laughs> the faction said, now let's go to school. And the whole faction has gone to school, is in the classroom. <laughs> starting. And why is this faction studying law? <coughs> it is trying to uh, checkmate or match the other faction that uh, has some legal gurus. Oh, guys, you know, what's it? <laughs> This is amazing about this country, you know. So I, 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 I think um, if you wanted um, to really, really uh, uh, appreciate the poverty of this dichotomy that is common in our newspapers between or, of Lacoste and uh, uh, G40, just unpack the G40, it's useless. So I, I have no problem concluding, and, 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 and I, I hope going forward, only those who really uh, have fought through this very hard, very well, uh, from a scientific point of view, will say there is a faction called G40. I am the one who used, and I've said this before, I will repeat it here, I am the one who came up with the phrase G40 to mean Generation 40, and I was very clear as an academic, which is why I made reference, that I'm talking about a demographic group. I'm not talking about a, a, you know, a, a, a political faction. 
And uh, I used this phrase in August of uh, 2011. And no one has ever asked me. You know, they can you send me emails and say, oh, uh, not you're asking about Zimbabwe, or you're asking about NAST, or something like this. Or even this uh, faction, faction. Or so and so has said this about the faction. But no one has ever asked me, why did you choose this name, Generation Fort? Like, where did Fort come from? Nobody has ever asked me that. But you know, academics, are not uh, Tsikam standards. Uh, they, when they come up with phrases and so forth, there is a reason, they are grounded. Exactly. You know? And, and to make a, a long story short, and, 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 and for purposes of uh, triggering an interest, in case anyone wants to um, follow this up, the 40 comes from the fact that you cannot be you cannot contest for head of uh, state and government unless you are 40, at least 40. You understand? It's the youngest age. Life begins at 40. Sorry? Life begins at 40. In any case. But the constitution says in order to qualify, there is an age limit for the office of the people. Now, uh, Zimbabwe is 36 years old. And, and, and we're looking at the younger generation. When, when, when this issue of generation 40, to say this generation of uh, people who would have been uh, uh, maybe five, but at least 10 if you want, at independence, or who were born at independence. That generation, the younger generation, by the time it produces the 40, and, 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 and if you are looking at 1975, or 1970, but if you're looking at it, it has actually done that. But in 2010, 2011, we're looking at this as we know, we had uh, uh, the census in 2012, and, it, and, and there was that consciousness about the fact that when all is said, or after all has been said and done, this country is uh, in demographic terms a very young, the majority of our citizens are young people. This is a fact about this country. Now, from a political point of view, and if you are an academic, if you are a politician who ap uh, approaches politics from an academic point of view, you've got to think about the implications, the demographic implications of a society whose majority vote has electors, if you are not afraid of elections, if you believe in elections, it should boggle your mind. You should think about that. Uh, and, and, and some of us, going back to our days at uh, the University of Zimbabwe, and, and when we were writing, voting for democracy and so forth, the question of electoral politics has always been a fundamental thing. You know? So the generation uh, fought has to do with that yardstick of 40, what's the consciousness, what are the issues. But also, the fact that this generation is one that is removed from participating in a very fundamental historic uh, 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 experience of our country, which is uh, the liberation struggle. We are Zimbabwe because of a liberation struggle. How do they access? How does that generation access that experience. And that's why the piece was written in August, which is uh, the hero's map, to say, we've got to start thinking very seriously about grounding the younger generation, which is going to take over whether anyone wants it or not. But we've got to think very seriously about grounding that generation in the historic experience of our liberation. And they can only do so by being uh, exposed to the values and ideals of the liberation struggle. And that was the, the, the report. And this is a demographic issue that affects all Zimbabweans across the uh, political spectrum. It has nothing to do with just ZANU PF. And it is, it's been surprising that it then has been uh, given this other uh, uh, context. Now, I think that uh, uh, if, we, if I'm, uh, for me to persuade you or convince you 
to throw away G40 as a faction, which I'm telling you, you should do so. If you want to be counted among reasonable people, you need to do that. <laughs> because it's unreasonable to say two people, three people are a faction. It, it, it is unreasonable. It, 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 you are doing your, your, your profession a great disservice, and you are doing the country a great disservice. Because now everybody is writing about G4 as a political faction. It's not. And it is not going to become a faction simply because you say that it is. Well, how about Lacoste? Is it a political faction? Well, you know, it's quite interesting that um, people have come up with, uh, invented a new thing like Lacoste. I mean, clearly this is new. You would think that, you know, a, a faction has developed over the last two years, or since 2014, which is called like, uh, Lacoste. I think this is incorrect. I think this is just, you know, uh, uh, the politics of appearances. The reality of the matter is that what is called <coughs> Lacoste is what used to be called uh, the Nangagwa faction. That's the fact. And, 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 and one, uh, in, uh, if you are a student of history, you must ask yourself, <coughs> if something used to be called this, and then it uh, transforms or uh, gets a new name, what's going on there? Why would people uh, move away from what they used to say, you know, uh, uh, before 2014, uh, reading your newspapers, even reading academic literature, we used to read about the Nangaro faction and the Mujuru faction. This is a fact. Then Mujuru goes away, and the Mujuru faction ends up being a political party, the Zimbabwe people first. Then you say, ah, so it's gone, so let's now change it, not call this uh, what we used to call it, and say it is. Uh, like cost in order to justify calling something as G40. I think the moment you do that in academia, that's called reification. You know, uh, you are creating a false reality. You are giving uh, words a concreteness or an existence that they don't have and that they don't represent. Uh, and so you end up with a situation where your discourse is going. Uh, off on a tangent, but the reality remains. And you, you, you remain uh, uninformed and uninforming. Because you, you have this template that is self-serving. That doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make sense from a historical point of view. It doesn't make sense from the point of view of what is going on or what's likely to go on uh, in the future. Now, one thing that I believe is very important is that we, uh, templates are useful. We can't do without them. So because people are interested in understanding what's going on, I think we should give them a useful template that actually captures the reality. Over the last, uh, I think, uh, 12 months, we've tried to give you uh, a template, but that template was uh, uh, incomplete, and I realized now that no, we need to complete this template. Because what is clear is that both in, in the media as well as in general society, uh, in public discourse, there's a desire for people to have tools that uh, allow them to describe the political situation and the political development, the current in a meaningful way, in a, in a way that uh, is as close to the truth as is reasonable possible.